using animals for pest control. Chicken and ducks are very happy to control pests for you. Some ideas for integrating animals into other systems. If chickens or ducks are kept in one area, they will clean under trees by eating all larvae and insects which could damage the tree. Your pest problems then become animal food. If chickens or ducks are kept on cropland after harvest, they will eat many pests in the ground which are waiting for the next crop planting. At the same time, the chickens and ducks will be fertilizing the land and functioning as animal tractors. Feed insects to animals. If plants infested with pests are given to animals, the plants will become animal fodder and this will reduce pest numbers. Chicken tractor. Ducks and chickens. Ducks and pigs. Natural pesticides. Natural pesticides are a short-term solution for handling immediate pest problems quickly. Natural pesticides should be a part of pest management, but should only be used when necessary. Do not use natural pesticides if there are no pests or crops are not damaged. In fact, they should not even be used if only small amount of crops are damaged. Take time to observe if pest predators are eating the pests and if those pests are spreading quickly or slowly. If there are still pest predators, it is best to let them do the work. Some natural insecticides are very strong and will kill all insects, both damaging and beneficial insects. Be careful because most insects are not harmful to your crops and killing them can even cause more problems in the future. How to use natural pesticides. You can apply natural pesticides using a palm broom or tree branch as a brush. This method is simple, but sometimes the natural pesticides will not spread evenly and we will be much more likely to get on your skin. For home gardens and small pest problems, plastic hand sprayers can, can be used and are effective. An aqua bottle with small holes in the lid will make an easy and cheap sprayer. A hand sprayer made of bamboo can also be used and is explained in more detail later in this module. The best way to spray is using a spray pack but these are expensive and require more maintenance. One spray pack can be bought by a group or as a community-owned tool. When spraying, always wear long pants, long shirts, gloves, shoes, and a protect protective cover for your mouth and nose, especially when spraying stronger natural pesticides. Glasses are also good to use, and remember, some types of natural pesticides can cause skin problems and make you sick if too much skin if too much gets on your skin or into your mouth nose or eyes after use all sprayed tools should be cleaned with water before they are stored hand picking hands are an excellent natural pesticide many pest problems can be controlled by regular observation and hand removal of pests Smart Ideas Stop using natural pesticides at least two weeks before harvesting. This is very important to prevent food becoming contaminated with pesticides, which could make people sick. Rotate the type of sprays used to prevent insects becoming resistant to any one type of pesticide. Some pesticides will work better than others. Experiment for yourself. Spray in the morning or late afternoon to prevent plants burning in the hot sun. During the wet season, try to spray at least three hours before rainfall so that the spray can 
will have maximum effect. Insect spray, biological spray. Collect a handful of insects which are eating your plants, crush them, and mix them into a small bucket of water. Leave for two days. Strain the liquid and spray onto affected crops. The same type of pests as the ones in the spray will be repelled by this liquid. The remaining insect bodies can be put in containers and placed around crops. The smell of this will continue to repel pests. Neem spray. The neem tree can be used to make a safe and effective natural insecticide. Neem can be used on almost all types of insects, including mosquitoes. Sometimes it can take a few weeks for results to show. Because with some types of insects, neem breaks their breeding cycles. Neem is one of the best plants to use because it is safe for people and will not cause many problems for beneficial insects, especially pest predators. In some conditions, it may even increase production of beneficial earthworms. Snails, slugs, nematodes, beetles, worms, moths, leaf miners, flies, mosquitoes, and grasshoppers are some of the insects which can be controlled by using neem spray. Methods for using neem. Crush neem seeds and put into a cloth bag. Place the bag into a bucket or drum filled with water and soak overnight. Use 500 grams of neem seeds for every 10 liters of water. Use as a spray on pest insects <clears throat> and affected crops. This method is more effective than using neem leaves. Collect a large handful of fresh neem leaves. Crush into small bits and place in a bucket of water. Leave for two days. Then remove the leaves and use the liquid as a spray. Dry a large handful of neem leaves. Crush them and place in a bucket of water. Leave for two days, strain and then use the liquid as a spray. Neem spray can also be made by soaking crushed neem seeds in alcohol or making oil from the neem seeds using an oil press. These methods are more expensive but produce a much stronger pesticide. Garlic and chili spray. Combine three bulbs of peeled garlic with a large handful of chilies and boil in a pot of water. Add one-fourth block of soap, stir evenly, and leave for one day. Strain and use two cups of this liquid each time you spray. Garlic is an insecticide, fungicide, and pest repellent. Chili is also an insecticide and insect repellent. The soap will help the spray stick to plants and pests. Use this liquid for aphids, worms, caterpillars, and moths. Smart ideas. Garlic and chili plants will naturally repel many insects. Plant them around fruit trees and vegetable plots to help reduce insect problems. Garlic and chili can also be used separately as sprays. Papaya spray. Collect one kilogram of papaya leaves, about one large plastic bag. Crush into small bits and mix into one liter of water. Then leave for one hour. Strain and add four more liters of water and one large spoonful of soap. Spray onto insect pests. This papaya spray can be used on aphids, termites, bugs, and caterpillars. For termites, crush young, unripe papaya fruit and collect the juice. Spray this directly onto termites and damaged wood. Ginger juice spray. Grate one handful of ginger and put into a bucket of water. Leave for one day, then spray on damaged plants to control larvae of worms and caterpillars. Taro leaf spray. Taro leaves contain lysolic acid. When insects eat this, 
It feels something like eating broken glass. To make this spray, simply crush 10 taro leaves and place in 3 liters of water, half a bucket. Stir well. Spread onto plants using a palm broom. Make sure every plant is covered well with this liquid so they will equally receive protection against insects. Tomato Leaf Spray Tomato leaves are a natural insecticide and a mild fungicide. They can be used on aphids, ants, worms, caterpillars, insect eggs, grasshoppers, moths, nematodes, white flies, fungi, and bacterial rot. To make the spray, cook one kilogram of tomato leaves in two liters of water for 30 minutes. Add two finely cut handfuls of tomato leaves, stem, and fruit, then add two liters of water. Mix the materials together and leave for six hours, half a day. Strain and add a quarter block of soap. Spray this liquid every two days if insects, especially moss, are in large numbers. Beware. Tomato leaves, when used as an insecticide, are poisonous to humans. This is because the chemicals in the tomato leaves become much more concentrated. Wear gloves and protective materials over your nose and mouth when using this spray. Glue spray. Glue spray can be made from leftover water from cooking cassava, taro, or potatoes. Small insects will stick to the glue end event and eventually die of suffocation. This spray is good to use for aphids, caterpillars, and white flies, but you can also try it on other small insects. To make the spray, simply mix the left over cooking water from cassava, taro, or potatoes with more water. The strength of this liquid depends on which are used. Just estimate. Spray on plants. A good mixture will leave a thin white coating on plants once it is dried. Soap spray. This spray is effective for snails, slugs, aphids, caterpillars, small beetles, and other leaf-eating insects. To make this spray, use one large spoonful of soap or soap powder per one liter of water. Spray only on pests or damaged plants. You can also use leftover dishwashing or cloth washing water as a pesticide spray. Beetle nut juice spray. Beetle nut juice is known as a very effective poison for giant snails and other types of snails. Collect the beetle juice nut juice in a bucket. Combine with water and spray directly on snails. This spray can be made of betel nut, that's B-E-T-E-L, nut, lime powder, or a combination of both. Spray outside of your vegetable plots to deter snails from entering. However, this liquid is not recommended for use directly on plants. Use regularly. Tobacco leaf spray. Tobacco leaf spray should only be used as a last option. Wear protective clothing and protective material for hands and face when making and using tobacco spray. Tobacco leaves are very poisonous and can kill beneficial insects as well. Tobacco spray can be used for most pest insects. To make the spray soak one kilogram about one plastic bag of crushed tobacco leaves in 15 liters of water for one day and one night. Add two large spoonfuls of liquid or block soap and stir well. Strain and use the liquid as a spray. You can also dry the leaves and crush them into a powder. The powder can be used for aphids, slugs, caterpillars, and leaf curl virus. Do not use this spray on tomato plants, potato, eggplant, chili plants, or roses. Ants cause problems through digging and removing seeds. They can never be removed completely. 
but their effects can be reduced. For root damage, try using biological, chili, garlic, tomato, or tobacco sprays. Natural fungicides. Fungus is an organism that lives and grows on the surface of plants, animals, wood, people, and even cement and non-living surfaces. Fungus lives best in damp and moist conditions. This can cause problems for plants because by covering plant surfaces, it causes rotting and prevents normal growth. The best way to control fungus on plants is by providing them with enough wind, sunlight, and airflow. Fungus growth is encouraged by dark, damp conditions and rotting materials. For trees, remove all dead wood and prune the tree to allow more wind and sunlight through. Only prune as much as is needed. For vegetables, remove old and dead leaves and provide trellises trellises for climbing plants, like peas, beans, and tomatoes. Very badly diseased plants should be removed and burned. Don't let mulch touch tree trunks or vegetable stems. Neem spray. You can use neem as a natural fungicide. Make liquid from neem seeds in the same way as used for natural pesticides. Then spray this on mildew and rust mildew. This may also work for other fungus, but more research is still being conducted. Experiment for yourself. Seaweed tea spray. Collect some fresh seaweed, rinse with water to remove the salt, then place in a bucket of water. Leave for two weeks, then spray on fungus infected plants. Diluted urine spray. Combine one part human urine to four parts water. Spray on plants or trees damaged from fungus, like vine mildew, powdery mildew, and other types of similar fungus. Milk powder spray. Combine one liter fresh milk or powdered milk with 10 liters of water. Spray every 10 days on vegetables or trees that are suffering from fungus, mildew, or mosaic virus. Sweet potato leaf spray. Cut and soak three large handfuls of sweet potato leaf in one bucket of water. Leave for one day. Then use as a spray for fungus, especially for rice fungus diseases. Garlic spray. Dry garlic and crush into a powder. Combine one large spoon of garlic powder with one liter of water and use as a spray for fungus attacking tomato and bean plants. Papaya spray. Papaya spray can be used on insects, but can also be used as a mild fungicide for coffee rust, powdery mildew, and brown spots on rice leaves. Evaluating results. The results of using natural pesticides and fungicides should be continuously observed. Observe how much the pesticides are working and if the treatment needs to be repeated. If pest problems have not stopped, you have a few choices, such as repeating the spray treatment, trying a stronger combination, trying a different pesticide, combining natural pesticide materials, combine different kinds of materials together. Making simple sprayers. This information is taken from Lick Lick Buck, a development book compiled by Lick Lick Buck Information Center, Papua New Guinea. Materials, a bamboo pole of adult arm length with, three no with nodes three to four centimeters wide. A wooden rod about one meter long, longer than the bamboo it will fit into. It is best to use a hard wood. Nails for making holes, a hammer and a saw. A strip of cloth, about one meters long and 10 centimeters wide. A small length of wire or strong string. Method, cut the bamboo pole so that on one end of the node is closed and the other end is open. There cannot be any other nodes in between 
the ends. Use the nails and hammer to make lots of small holes on one side where the node is closed. Wrap with wire or string around the other side to stop it from splitting. 2. Wrap the strip of cloth around one end of the wooden rod until it is thick enough to be used as a valve. Fits tightly into the bamboo pole. Tie with wire or string to hold it in place. Make a handle and stopper at the other end of the wooden rod. The stopper will stop you from pushing the rod through the bamboo node. This sprayer is used like a simple pipe or sprayer. 1. Push the rod into the bamboo pole up to the stopper. 2. Dip the node end of the bamboo pole into spray liquid. Then pull back the rod to its original position. The tube will fill with liquid as you pull it back. Be careful not to pull the rod out of the pole. When you want 3. When you want to spray, Simply push the rod back into the bamboo pole until the liquid in the bamboo pole is used up. Refill and spray again. This sprayer works similar to a doctor's syringe. This sprayer can also be made of plastic or metal pipes instead of bamboo. Biological Control Sprays made from insects are a form of biological control. Besides insect sprays, there are some other techniques which are biological control methods, like introducing a pest predator into an area that has large pest problems. However, large-scale pest control should be discussed within groups or have government support and involvement. Often the pest problems can be controlled without having to use pesticides. Remember, most insects are not harmful to your crops. All insects play specific roles in nature and are needed to keep a balanced ecosystem. In fact, small numbers of pests are beneficial because they supply food for pest predators. Removing all pests can cause imbalance in the ecosystem and cause you to become dependent on pesticides. Integrated pest management is a strategy which will improve your land and crop productivity, especially for the long term. These techniques naturally combine with permaculture techniques to help create a strong and resilient agriculture system.